All right. This is the brand new F2400 from Fazabot. Now, this one was sent out to me. It's not gonna change my review in any way, shape, or form, but Fozzybot wanted me to review this to see how well it works doing all the different tests that I do, and that way you guys can know if it may be a good fit for you. Now, I've had this for well over a month now. I've done a number of tests, and this could be a really good setup for like a van life or running very basic emergency power needs, but it is limited as well. So you need to make sure you understand exactly what it can and cannot do to see if it's gonna be the right fit for you. But overall, it's been a fairly good unit. It holds a charge very well. It's got really nice storage compartments and special covers for the vents. So that way that stays clean inside. I'm gonna go over all of that. So stick around for the F2400 from Fozzybot Review. Now, first of all, my name is Ben. If you haven't been to the channel before, Minuteman Prep YouTube channel, I do a lot of solar backup. Uh, I like all sorts of preparedness. I think it's very important that everybody be prepared for different types of situations, whatever apply to you. And so if you want help figuring out exactly what type of solar generator or backup power station, whatever it is that's gonna work best for your needs, just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com, links down below. You can also just check out the website, poweredportablesolar.com, and I've got tons of reviews and kits of things that I would already go ahead and use, things that I recommend. Now I test all of this equipment on my own and put it through quite a rigorous test to find out exactly how well these units work. And then I even compile it all into a comparison chart so that way all of that information is saved and then it's easily accessible. So I'll have links down below for the comparison chart and all of that. I'd love to be able to help you find out what system works best for you and get you the best price on that system. For the Fozzabot F2400, the thing that makes it most unique is this dial right up front. You can see as I turn it, the screen is adjusting the wattage. This is to change the AC charging rate. AC charging rate just means your wall outlet charging speed. Now with the F2400, it comes with all the connectors necessary stored right up here. So it uses an Anderson power pole, which is this red and black connector, to MC4, which is this male female connector right here. And then we've got a car charger as well, as well as a NEMA 515 to C13 plug. Now, the nice thing about these plugs is there's no big power adapter brick. Those big power adapter bricks, all they do is they take 120 volt power from your outlet and convert it to whatever voltage is necessary for the battery. On this unit, it's built in, so all you need is this cable, and that's really nice because in the past, and, and still sometimes you'll find units that have big power adapters, and it really sucks lugging those around. The reason that there's a variable option is because the slower you charge a power station or a battery in general, the longer the life cycles are going to last. Now this does have a lithium iron phosphate battery in it, which means you're gonna get about 3,500 cycles out of it before you reach 80% efficiency. So you're realistically looking at 10 years of constant use before you have to worry about the battery inside as far as not being very efficient. The battery is 2,048 watt hours specifically, and it's a 51.2 volt battery system, which is a higher voltage to go with which means it's gonna be easier for the inverter to get that power off the battery and into your equipment. The inverter is a decent size at 2,400 watts, which means you can run anything that you'd plug into a normal wall outlet off of this with great ease, as long as it doesn't have a huge surge peak. So for example, like a large air compressor may be very difficult to start on this because they have such a large surge to get started but running a small pancake air compressor would definitely be possible. Most people are gonna be looking at this to run something like a fridge or a freezer or lights and fans, something remote or portable. It is definitely portable, it's, it's manageable. I mean, it's definitely heavy, but it's not unwieldy by any means. The biggest issue that I've had with the F2400 was the inverter efficiency test that I did. So I put a load on this, and I only got 76% efficiency out of it, which is considered low, but we definitely wanna be closer to 85% because that is a better standard. It's very rare that systems get above 90%. Now, there's no battery expandability for this. On the front, you've got uh, the XT60 output right here. That'll do 12 volts at 25 amps. Here you've got your normal cigarette lighter port or DC port. And then down here, you've got your 5521 barrel connectors. I'd like to hear what you guys use these for because I never use them, so tell me. And then over here, you've got your USB A's. Right here, you've got your USB C's. And then here, more USB C's. On the top, you've got the storage. And then on the side here, this is the most interesting part, is the fans actually have these covers that pop up. 
And the reason that Fozzybot said that they did this is because they're trying to make sure that like bugs and dust and rain and things like that don't get inside. You just have to make sure that when you're using this, that these are flipped up. Now they are spring loaded. They will flop back up on their own. And I'm sure if you give it Red Bull, it'll fly. But the other flap here is not spring loaded, but it will keep up. And this is gonna be your Anderson power pole adapter right here for solar input. And then your AC outlet are gonna be on this side right here. You turn on this button to turn on your outlets and then you've got six different outlets right here. And collectively, you'll run up to 2,400 watts off of it. So having tested this one personally, it's rated up to 500 watts solar input. Do you guys know for me, you can't really call it a solar generator, solar power station, or anything like that, unless the solar panels can really keep up with the unit, which basically means recharge the system in five hours or less because the average number of solar peak hours in the USA is five hours a day. That varies depending on location, time of year, altitude, all sorts of crazy stuff, weather. And so basically I wanna know can it do as advertised? The second concern I have with the unit is it has a 500 watt solar input, which is great because you have a 2048 watt hour battery, a 500 watt input means you could charge it in about four hours. So you're under that five hour mark, which is definitely good. And then if you're running say a refrigerator on it, the refrigerator is probably gonna use about hundred watt hours per hour, which means you're gonna get of the 500 watts going in, 400 watts to go to the battery and then 100 watts to go to the fridge. It does have a UPS feature, so you can have a refrigerator or any other device plugged into it with it plugged into the wall outlet. And when the grid goes down, it's going to keep running that equipment. And I've tested that and it so far works perfectly fine. My difficulty with the 500 watt input is it's required to over panel in order to get the 500 watts. So it's a 15 to 50 volt port and then up to 15 amps. So what that means is let's say you take a 12 volt, 100 watt solar panel. It's actually gonna be making anywhere between 18 to 20 volts when it's operating. So that means I can only connect two 100 watt solar panels. And each of those panels are gonna be doing five amps. So we'd have two panels connected in series, which means panel one connected to panel two, and then one single cable coming to the unit. I'd have three groups of those, and that's gonna give me about 40 volts between the three groups, six panels total. 40 volts and 15 amps, because we're doing a series parallel combination. If that doesn't make sense, shoot me an email. I'm happy to explain it. That would be maxing out the solar input, and that's gonna be 600 watts connected in order to get the 500 watts. Now I have to do that with panels normally because it's rare to get the rated output of a solar panel. A good solar panel will do 80% or more of its output. So basically by having six 100 watt solar panels, you can get 500 watts in. Now I prefer to use the 200 watt solar panels because I can get the same voltage as the 100 watt panels, but then I'm doubling the amperage. So as well, if I really wanted to make sure I'm getting the 500 watts or as much possible energy going into this, I'm gonna take four 200 watt solar panels. I'm gonna have two groups of two. Each group is gonna have the panels connected in series to each other. And then those two groups are gonna to combine together in a two to one branch connector and then come in here to the Fozzybot F2400. I'm gonna have 800 watts connected, but I'm gonna be making 40 volts at 20 amps. And any amperage that you make above the rated amperage is going to just not go into the unit. So I'm gonna be maximizing that 15 amps. So let's say we're getting 18 volts out of each panel because it's a series parallel combination, we're gonna get 36 volts at 15 amps. That's gonna get me 540 watts actually going into the system, which means it's going to do as advertised. You just have to be aware you're gonna to need to use more than 500 watts to get 500 watts in, and that's normal with all solar generators. It just would have been awesome for Fazabot to put this charge controller at 15 volts to 75 volts or even 65 volts because it would be definitely easy to connect three panels in one group and then three panels in another group and really guarantee that that 500 watt input works. Now the idle power consumption rate on this, meaning if it's turned on with the inverter turned on, it's gonna use about 25 watt. Bottom line is it works great as a UPS. The inverter is a little inefficient, you have to over panel it just like most systems. So it works just like all the other systems, but the life cycles are really gonna last a long time. It's definitely portable. It comes with all the connectors you need. It stores it in a nice convenient spot. So it may not be the one that I would first go to choose. In a van life setup, you could easily keep this under your bed or in a storage compartment, have 600 watts of solar panels plugged into this. And if you're just using things like a fan and a laptop, phone charger, really simple things in a van life setup, 
This would definitely work as long as you got sun every day. As an emergency backup situation, this is basically only gonna run a fridge. You put much more on that, you know, maybe some phones or something like that. But if you put a laptop, Wi-Fi, TV, and a fridge, that's barely gonna last through a single night, simply for the fact that your fridge is gonna use about 100 watt hours per hour, your TV is gonna use anywhere from 50 to 75 watt hours per hour, your Wi-Fi is gonna use about 25 watt hours per hour. So if you were to go with this for a backup power station, you just need to know that it's not expandable, it can work, but it has to be very basic needs. But if it comes down to it, you could recharge it quickly off of a gas generator. That would offset your gasoline consumption, which is definitely gonna help you get through a rough spot in an emergency or something like that. Now they are having a sale on this. Uh, it, for whatever coupon codes or sales, or whatever I have, I'll put them in links down below. So those are all my concerns, the pros, the cons, you know, my compliments to it, whatever. So it may be the best option for you or may not be. That's only for you to decide. Be prepared. This may not be the right system for you. It could be the right system for you. I like really big systems because I'm trying to run a lot of equipment. I like it to be expandable. To find out all the systems that I'm using as well as get complete kits with expansion battery, solar panels, everything, go to poweredportablesolar.com. If you have questions, shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. Thank you to all of my Patreon members. I've got special content that I'm working on for you guys. And as well, if you want to be a contributor and get direct access to me, just go to patreon.com slash minutemanprep and I'll be happy to help. Be prepared, guys. You just never know what's coming in the future. You want to have backup power. Make sure you get your food, your water, your protection, your training, your physical fitness is one of the biggest things that people don't factor into their preparedness. Make sure you're factoring all of those things in be prepared. See y'all in the next video.